be making basics. What's going on YouTube? Be making basics back again with another dope video. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe because I'm coming back to back with bangers. Today's video, I'm actually going to be giving you some mixing tips and I'm going to be actually call this like a cheat code, okay, to mixing in Logic Pro 10.8. Now, I'm going to really keep this simple. Let's go over a few tips here. Um, I'm going to break some rules that I've taught you on the channel. And, and even in some of my courses, I, like, I teach you the right way. And then I'm going to teach you, like in this video, like a cheat code type thing. So first thing I'm going to show you that's going to be kind of a cheat code. Um, usually when you mix, you want to always make sure that you're mixing with like audio files. Okay. So like you don't want to necessarily mix with MIDI. But okay so like our first like kind of cheat code with this is that if okay you don't have like a whole lot of tracks that have a whole lot of processing and stuff like that on it meaning you don't have a whole lot of tracks that have like a bunch of different audio effects and stuff you know what i'm saying you don't necessarily have to go ahead and export export your session as audio files and then import them into a new session that rule is really just in place to help with the processing power but if like your your beats pretty simple then there's no real you don't necessarily have to do that so we're gonna actually keep everything right here um, some things this is another tip what I would do is just like maybe on just like a sample I would make that audio you know what I'm saying and then everything else will be MIDI but anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and start with this mixing. Um, first thing I'm gonna like to do is just like, while I'm making the beat, I'll kind of go ahead and get the levels anyway. And then what I'll do is this, once um, I'm finished with that, I'll come to the hook, put a loop on it, and then just like make sure that nothing is peaking here first, okay? I'm not even worried about the stereo out or whatever. I'm just making sure nothing's peaking here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that down some. Once I notice that there's nothing like peaking here, then what I'll do is just simply put all the drums in a bus, okay? And then I'll put all of the like sample or melody instruments on the bus. All right, and then what that's gonna do is giving me even more control over the overall volume and sound and everything like that. And what we want here is this to be negative six dB, negative five dB. So I'll just turn this down and let's to pay attention to the stereo out. Alright, so leveling tips here. I already got the levels, but like if we were to just kind of break this up and um, just start just from like your drums, if you can kind of pay attention here, the kick is just a little bit higher than the 808. And we, we're tucking that clap and snare under that. And some people might say that this should be louder. Then we tuck the hi hats under that. And then we want to take one of the samples, tuck that under that. And then from here, just a, on a real simplistic approach here, is this, I would recommend like maybe going ahead and panning certain instruments to the left or the right, like your hi-hats, certain, um, you know what I'm saying, instruments. All right, let's check it out. All 
All right, bet. So pretty much we have uh, the right levels. We've panned things and we've also have used like our aux tracks and busing to also affect the levels as well. Really one of the last things we're gonna do is EQ. And I would highly suggest that you really only use subtractive EQ when you do EQ your beats. So with subtractive EQ, well basically is where we're gonna be taking out frequencies rather than adding them. For the most part, you kind of want to leave, you know, the overall sound alone and just kind of take out and carve out some room for other frequencies to get in. So let's what am I talking about right here? If I just could, was to go ahead and pull up a uh, EQ here, let's just take a look here. This is 20 hertz and it goes all the way up to 20,000 hertz. You can't see the 20 right there, but that's pretty much what happens. And this is what we can hear. Uh, this is our hearing range. And so say, for instance, like an 808, um, 808s usually are going to be going from like a lot of their main frequencies are going to be like to 20 hertz all the way to 200 hertz. So that's going to be pretty muddy for the rest of the instruments. And so what you want to do to make room for this 808 is you want to cut out some of those frequencies from 20 hertz all the way up to 200 hertz on all of the instruments. So that makes room for the 808 or other bass instruments to shine through. So let's just go ahead and do that. So now um, we can start off with like the clap, some ba something basic. I already have uh, a high pass filter built in here, like a preset. So I'm just going to click on that. And as you notice, it goes all the way to around 200. That's like I said, where the 808s and stuff like that usually hit. And you might you might want to take out more or less, but you know for the most part, that's what's going on. Turn off, mute some of these other ones. Sometimes, even though you can't hear some of those frequencies that it's cutting out, it's actually doing something. So just keep in mind that you do have to do this. And see, like with this piano, it sounds a little thin right now, but when you put it with the rest of the beat, it's going to sound better. If I put any more of this in here, it starts to, you know what I'm saying, complete, compete with the, uh, with the 808 and the bass instrument. So let's check this out now. And then pretty much for the most part, you'll just add like reverb or compression if needed. Um, a lot of times it's not needed. You know what I'm saying? And you notice I didn't really do too much on the EQ in, but like just making room um, for some of those instruments to pop through, like you know the kick instrument, the 808, and everything like that. Um, if I was gonna add a reverb on here, I probably would put it on these this sample. So. We could add it on a couple of different ways. The proper way is to put it on the sins, but sometimes, you know, with just like I said, since this is like the cheat codes, 
you know, we'll just throw it right on here and turn the mix down. You know what I mean? Literally, keep it simple. There we go. And then here's a tip, like say if your melody is like too low or your drums or whatever, you can come over here to that auxiliary track that you grouped and bust all your instruments to. And then you can go in and add like some type of compressor or maximizer or whatever. And it can kind of like boost up that beat or boost up that um, the particular group. Um, me personally, like what I like to do is use this SSL comp or compressor and put that on there and then there's this particular one in here I think it's just the West Master Bus yeah I think that's what it is so I'm gonna turn this down some kind of puts it in your face a little bit more. It can also do the same thing for the drums too. Um, so again, you can you can kind of play around with these different presets, but I like the, the West Master Bus on this SSL. And then we just keep it under that negative 6 dB, negative 5 dB, and then we're good. And like I said, man, for the most part, this is uh, the video. Man, let me know what y'all think in the description below. Appreciate y'all, and I will see you in the next video. Out.